Coming up on today's show, S&P closes at a record high, the latest Fed speak, I'll take a look at Apple's new product, the Vision Pro, and whether it can rescue its stock price. Take a look at the latest earnings from Disney, Ford, and Snap, President Xi steps into the stock market, and the latest fun from Bill Ackman. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Click Capital Daily Market Show. I'm your host, Jared. I'm going to get you all up to speed with everything that's happening across financial markets today, including all the most important stocks, what the underlying trends are out there. And we almost hit S&P 5000 today for the first time ever. There's a look at the five-minute chart, literally getting up to 4999.89, about a tenth of one point away from that big psychological level of 5,000. And here we go again, the super six stocks ripping up, led by Meta up over 3%, and Nvidia cracking $700 for the first time ever. And this thing looks to have gone parabolic in a melt up. And you'll see this from time to time in the stock market. It's kind of reminded me of the real bubbly days of 2021. It's basically no one wants to sell. Short sellers don't want to get in there. They've already been wiped out. And just going down a five minute chart, we're trading up to 707 after hours. And that's thanks to the huge rip we're having right now as I speak. And the British chip maker Arm Holdings just reported earnings. Currently up 37% after hours with a huge move. Still got super micro computer ripping up as well. It too almost hitting $700 a share today. And there's a look at the semiconductor ETF just in this really strong uptrend. And so looking at stocks like Nvidia and Supermicro Computer, it's anybody's guess how high they go before they eventually have that blow off top. Who knows, we could see $1,000 in Nvidia over the next week or two. By the time we put in a proper top here, it's just a runaway train with super hot momentum. And there's a look at today's heat map, semiconductors, Back out in front again. Also got some good moves coming out of consumer cyclicals today. With a bit of a pullback in the defensives. A bit in healthcare, REITs and utilities was mixed. As we make our through the back end of Q4 earnings season. Of which I'll show you all the most important releases today. And this is a pretty tough environment to be a bear in. Even got Wall Street's biggest bank, JP Morgan. And their trading desk just reversed course and turned bullish on the stocks. They said although the house view for the bank is still bearish, the trading desk said they are now tactically bullish. And these moves in the market, tech stocks and semis, to show you how powerful momentum, sediment and liquidity really is. Because even after we got those hawkish remarks from Jay Powell on Sunday night, and we're getting a bunch of more Fed speakers coming out today, like Barkin saying recent progress on inflation might be a head fake, saying it makes sense to be patient on rate cuts. Along with Kashkari saying inflation isn't all the way there to the Fed's 2% goal. Rate cuts can wait. Got another Fed governor saying she wants to see further slowdown inflation before Fed cuts interest rates. And one of the world's largest bond managers, PIMCO, sees risk of inflation reigniting. That could prompt a swift response from the Fed. Have a look at the NASDAQ Qs. They simply don't care about all that hawkish Fed speak or fears of inflation reigniting. Yields moving up a bit. The momentum train has taken over and these stocks are starting to decouple, at least in the short term, from the macro, bond yields, inflation risks, and it's simply becoming a bit of a pile on. And like I said, who knows how high we can go before we eventually and inevitably see that blow off top. And so even though we've got record concentrations from these top stocks in the indices, a lot of people saying that it's justified. That's BMO saying fears that mega cap tech dominance will hurt the stock market are overblown. Extreme concentration in the stock market is an overstated risk. Even though seven tech stocks make up a whopping 29% of the S&P, they're not concerned about that. Going on to say their work shows the stock market has held up just fine in prior periods when the outperformance of mega cap stocks started to wane. And so the theme last year of most stocks underperforming and the mega cap tech stocks outperforming, that dynamic has exacerbated even more starting this year off. We can see that in breadth. The amount of S&P stocks above their 50-day average actually peaked out on the first trading day of this year at 92% and has fallen all the way just yesterday well below 60%. But the composite chart of these six mega cap tech stocks is already up over 23% year to date. And like I just showed you, a lot of people think this is going to keep going and going. If you want to make money in the stock market, apparently all you got to do is buy these big tech stocks. However, not everybody's so sure about that, including longtime billionaire investor Leon Cooperman said stocks will drop. Soaring US debt is worrying. Elon Musk is overpaid and he expects stocks to slide this year. Going on to say, when you look at everything going on in the world and you see the market multiple at 21 times, 
it seems too rich to me. Also saying everybody is now positive, and so my guess is that by the end of the year, maybe we will go down. However, looking at Fed fund futures, markets still pricing in about five rate cuts this year. Previously, we're pricing in six. The Fed thinks they're going to cut three times. And if nothing really breaks in the economy, unemployment still stays low. We've got this big capex spending on AI chips from some of the largest companies in the world. Then it's no reason tech stocks, semis and chips can't keep running for many more months to come if the Fed is able just to dial back rates based on inflation coming back and not in response to a weakening economy or any surprise or accident, then that's a huge tailwind for long duration assets like tech stocks. Because valuation is in the eye of the beholder. Because just doing a simple intrinsic valuation analysis on Nvidia to get where we are trading now, a bit above $700 a share, the market's really assuming over the next 10 years, its revenue is going to average 31% growth per annum with an average 25% net profit margin. The terminal PE ratio would be about 25 and that's based on current Fed fund rate around 5%. And if you look up here at the fair value price and discount when I move the discount rate, that is pricing it relative to risk-free bonds. We go down to 4%, seeing fair value go to 794. If we go down to 3%, we can see fair value go to 871. Down to 2%, 957. However, what if we go the other way, back up to 6%? Well, then fair value goes to 661, 7%, 604, 8553. So they're the three big inputs into value in a stock. It's revenue growth, net profit margin, and the discount rate. And looking back in the last 10 years, Nvidia has averaged revenue growth around 21% and net profit margin around 22. However, that's exploded in the last year. They've actually saw revenue growth of 57% year over year. And Alice expect them to grow next year at 50% with their net income margin at 42%. However, it's very unlikely they'll retain those high rates for many more years. Over 50% of their revenue comes from their top five customers, Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Alphabet, Dell, and Super Microcomputer. A lot of these guys are working on their own chips, GPUs, not to mention the huge amount of competition out there around the world that is building like crazy now to catch up with Nvidia. Even though Nvidia do have the huge lead right now, you could think of capitalism in the stock market like the game Capture the White Flag. And looking back in history, no one company has held the white flag for a very extended period of time. You just have to look back in history of the top 10 largest companies by market cap over the last 60 years, back in 1960, AT&T, General Motors, General Electric, IBM, Eastman Kodak, Sears Roebuck, 1970, they had Xerox, 1990, things like Merck, so on and so forth. Looking back in history, a lot of these companies, some have even gone bankrupt, delisted, or are still below where they were trading 20, 30 years ago. One of the big standouts is Microsoft that's been able to stay at the top of the list over the last 20 years. And that's because a lot of companies are built on a particular platform, infrastructure, talent systems. They get big, successful, complacent, and then someone more new, fresh, and hungry comes along, and like I said, captures the white flag. And so no doubt Nvidia is in the lead now. They could easily retain that lead for a couple more years. However, if I were to change their revenue growth and net profit margin to what they've averaged over the last 10 years. That's 21% revenue growth, 22% profit margin, and even given them a terminal PE ratio in 10 years, really healthy of 25, that takes the fair value down to 300. And that's why I say valuations in the eye of the beholder. No one knows exactly for sure what their revenue growth and profit margin is going to average over the next 10 years. All we know is now they're hitting it out of the park and the market's just expecting them to keep hitting it out of the park for many more years to come. Who hasn't been hitting it out of the park lately is the former biggest stock in the world. Now number two, that's Apple. And there's a look at the relative performance of Apple versus the Nasdaq actually peaked out back in October 22 and has been underperforming for over a year now. And against the S&P 500, it's pretty much gone nowhere for two years. And that's because their year over year revenue growth is actually flat and only expected to grow 1.57% over the next year. Still have a very healthy business with net income margin at 26%. And so their big legacy products of iPhone market's pretty saturated. Anyone that's wanted an iPhone's pretty much got one. And sure, their services business is still growing well. They are still considered the number one brand in the world. Huge installed base over 2 billion people. Big network effects will always deserve a premium. However, they just launched their latest product, the Vision Pro, which they don't want to call virtual reality headset. They're calling spatial computing. And so a lot of people are wondering, is this going to be enough to reignite A, their business and revenue growth, and B, and probably more importantly, investor sediment towards the stock price? Well, it has been getting some really good reviews from the tech blogging community. It does look pretty cool. It probably will 
have some sort of success. However, at three and a half thousand dollars, it's not really a mainstream market product right now that most people can't afford. So it's really a niche product. However, the first version of every product and technology is always expensive. It's probably going to have some nuances and kinks to work out. And a lot of apps, big apps like Netflix and YouTube haven't signed on. So you can't watch Netflix and YouTube in the Vision Pro. As Netflix and YouTube and some of these other apps kind of compete with Apple and other areas, not to mention the cost to build the apps that are compatible with this product and they don't know whether it's going to work or not. And so for it to be successful, you kind of need these big apps to come on board, which they may in the future. There's still other, a lot of cool applications with it, you know, from entertainment, gaming, working, education. I can see big companies using it, but for three and a half thousand dollars, it is not cheap. And just looking at some estimates of what the impact could be on revenue, Bank of America is expecting for calendar 2024. They'll sell about 400,000 units, which should generate revenue of 1.4 billion, which is pretty much a drop in the bucket compared to the 385 billion they did in the last year. Gross margins expected to be 20%, which is okay. It's a bit below their company-wide gross margin, which is about double that. And the impact on earnings per share this year is only expected to be a penny versus the six bucks 50 they reported in EPS over the last year. Going forward and looking out over the next four years, they expect by 2026, they can drop the price to 2000. Then by 28, they can drop it down to 1500. And B of A is projecting they'll better sell 12 million units by 2028, which should bring in 18 billion. But again, EPS of only 18 cents. So while the product is cool, it's likely to get better and cheaper. It is going to compete with the Meta Quest coming from Meta. And they've already kind of got a lead on the software side with the metaverse. And so this is supposed to be the next generation of computing and kind of wearables. If you think about a phone, we've got to hold it. Whereas this kind of is just attached to your body. However, I don't think smartphones are going away anytime soon. And we're all going to be walking around in this dystopian future with all these headsets on. But who knows? It's definitely interesting to say the least. But in terms of big revenue driver, it's just not right there right now. So we know it's not going to really move the needle on earnings per share. However, more importantly, it could help investor sediment towards the Apple stock price. We won't really know until we get to hear from them again on Q1 earnings in March, how many they've actually sold. If there's been any issues with it, that's something that could negatively affect the stock price. It needs to be a real successful launch, even though it's not going to make a lot of money. It just needs to keep moving the company in the right direction. But even like BOA said, they still think it'll cost $1,500 in 2028, which is still not really a mainstream product. To go mainstream, you really need it to be like under 1000 The cheaper, the better. But the market is holding ground here after we gap down on earnings. Just going down to the 15-minute chart. There was a huge amount of money that bought that gap down to 179 and just ripped up, didn't even do a check back and just holding ground here below 190. This could be a bit of a sediment tailwind for the stock price or at the very least should keep it in this kind of sideways holding pattern. But like I just showed you with their revenue growth, it's hard to see them growing at these 20, 30% rates like we're seeing with some of the other guys as they're just so big to begin with, 3 trillion market cap, kind of already saturated the world with their iPhones. Such a huge base to try and grow from, not to mention the political tower risks with China as well. But anyway, we'll keep an eye on it and it'll be interesting to see on their next quarterly earnings report how it has gone and whether they can beat expectations in initial sales. And just quickly before we move on with the show, just as a reminder, I'm launching my first ever online course next Monday night on the show. If you haven't already, Subscribe to this channel and I'll let you know how you can get this at a big discount for the first week only. The course is comprised of 25 different modules over 12 hours in total length. And I go into a lot of content and strategies that I haven't ever talked about before on the show, as well as giving you a good background on everything to do with financial markets, financial markets history, some of the most famous bubbles and crashes throughout financial markets and what we can learn from them and diving deep into the technicals and how I do technical analysis. And so it's basically a broad range, A to Z, sharing all my knowledge and experience I've accumulated in over 20 years of trading and investing and from my time working at an investment bank as well. And so there's 25 modules that you can watch on demand. You can stream it to your TV and you'll have lifetime access as I plan on updating this course for many more years. And like I said, I'm gonna offer it to you guys for a good discount starting Monday and next week. So like I said, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and you'll be notified of when this course is available to purchase next week. Just moving on to a bunch of earnings we got out today. First being Disney. They beat estimates, hiking guidance, improving their streaming losses, delivering a buck 22 in earnings versus 99 cents expected. 
and revenue coming in a little softer than expected at 23 and a half billion. And what's really helped them is they narrow their losses from stream. It was a billion a year ago. They got that down to 216 million. Still not completely good. They got Disney Plus subscribers shrinking by 1.3 million. There's a look at the daily stock price at Disney. Closed today, just above 99. And going down to the five minute chart after hours, trading up almost 6% here at 105. So apparently the markets liked what they heard from them so far. Also got the British chip maker reporting ARM. And they came in with a pretty good beat. Revenue of 8.24 versus 7.61. EPS at 29 cents versus 25 cents. There's a look at the daily closing at 77 today and a huge rip after hours as I speak up 31% above 101 and again valuation in the eye of the beholder. So reporting 29 cents of earnings per share you extrapolate that to a year it's about a buck 20 versus a hundred dollar stock price it's approaching a price to earnings of a hundred. Many investors are willing to pay almost $100 for every dollar in earning. Absolutely insane valuation. We also just heard from Ford. They too also delivering a pretty good beat. Looking to catch up with GM, which has been performing well lately as well. Delivering pretty impressive numbers. Fourth quarter revenue rose by 11% year over year. They guided for full year earnings before interest and tax of eight to nine billion from Ford Pro and seven to seven and a half billion from Ford Blue. That's their traditional ICE engine vehicles. However, for their new EV unit, still looking at losses of five to five and a half billion. That's really what's been weighing down on these traditional automakers. Their transition to EV is coming at a big cost, still years behind Tesla in terms of gross margins and selling EVs. There's a look at the daily on Ford, closing up 6% today to 12.80. And like we'd been thinking, catching up to GM, which also gapped up on its earnings as well. And it's actually been Tesla that's been underperforming the other automakers of late. Still trying to hold on to this 180 level. What didn't do well today, and we should have known it, once we heard Dave Portnoy of Barstool Sports announcing on Twitter he'd loaded up on call options before earnings, was Snap plunging 31%. Missing earnings. And this stock's kind of mind-blowing. It's never made money. They burn through money. They got the one of the most outrageous stock compensation packages for management on the street. Paying themselves billions of dollars at the expense of shareholders. Whoever is dumb enough to donate their money to them is exactly what they're doing. Because they just lost another 15 cents per share this quarter. And there's a look at their quarterly earnings. Over the last eight quarters... All negative, 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 negative. Over the last eight years, negative, negative, negative. And it's gone out to a monthly stock price. Here we are trading at $11 a share, well off the crazy 2021 bubble of $83 a share. And I'm not so sure this stock even survives in the long run. I think Meta and others are eating their lunch and this could just trade sideways like a zombie for many more years whilst management keep enriching themselves at the expense of shareholders. Moving on to China and what's happening in their stock market. Not pleasing the guy at the top, Xi Jinping, looking to step in here meeting up with financial regulators in the country with them apparently working around the clock with a sense of urgency to get underneath their stock market and he actually just went ahead and removed their securities regulator and has apparently replaced them with someone they call the broker butcher Wu Qing as the new chairman of their securities regulator there's a look at their China 50 index which I think may have put in a bottom here and just looking at the large cap FXI trading on US exchanges got some big volume coming in there and even though Alibaba reported numbers in line with expectations and given a huge increase to their buyback program of 25 billion similar to what Meta did the stock still fell today as investor and sediment is still very very weak and fearful and worried about this sector you can see that in the stock price of Alibaba just trying to hold ground here at 50 day VWAP after having some good moves off the lows. And now that Xi Jinping has stepped into the market, I really think they don't want to see the bottom fall out of it here and go much lower. You've got to realize it's Chinese New Year this weekend. Very important date in the Chinese calendar. A lot of families meet up and Xi and their leaders want everyone to be feeling good. Prosperity is key for them. Their stock market's a part of that. They're also worried about social unrest, not to mention the national embarrassment of their stock market continuing to dive and dive, bringing the world's attention. I think we're either going to get a good bounce here or a huge big stimulus program. Either way, they're going to put a floor in it. And I think that's really a good thing to lean against as an investor creates a good risk reward, asymmetrical bet and upside. And why I continue to believe that we could get a really good rebound in the Chinese stock market this year, which is currently trading at the same levels from back in 2008, even though their economies multiplied several times since then, we may just be putting in a big double bottom here 
And like I said, in my opinion, I think it could be a good risk reward. Moving on, we've got one of the most famous billionaire hedge fund managers out there, Bill Ackman, launching a new fund for everyday investors in the US. This is similar to the one he's already got listed on European stock exchanges, where the bulk of his firm's $18 billion is under management. And he and over the years, he's been switching from traditional hedge fund to kind of listed companies as kind of a source of more permanent capital instead of the comings and goings of traditional hedge fund investors. And like him and most of his peers, they used to be huge 10 years ago, really dominated Wall Street and the media, but they just haven't been able to keep up with S&P 500. So passive investing index funds have just absolutely taken over the lunch. A lot of his mates have gone out of business. However, he's one of the few remaining ones of the big guys, and he's looking to expand, you know, get some of that retail investor money by having a listed closed-end fund. And he's always been a concentrated activist investor, typically holding between five and eight stocks. And there's a look at his current portfolio. Currently only holding seven stocks, with Chipotle his biggest, then restaurant brands, Hilton, Lowe's, Howard Hughes, Alphabet, and Canadian Pacific. And just moving on with the show, we got the VIX index now down to a 12 handle. It isn't finding new lows like the market's finding new highs. We are getting a little bit of a divergence here. Got the two-year yield holding ground just above 440. Same with the dollar index, just holding below 104. Bitcoin starting to perk up again. Closing above its 50-day VWAP. Similar pattern in gold. Still just consolidating there. A little bit of a turn up in crude. Above $74 a barrel. Got a nice pop-up in the clean energy sector today. With solar stocks taking the lead. After we had a good bounce up after yesterday's earnings on Enphase Energy. Even though they missed a little bit. Market still liked their report. And Planetia trading up once again. Up almost 8% today. After their really good quarterly earnings yesterday. There's a look at New York Community Bancorp. Putting in a pretty big buy the dip hammer candle here on volume. Let's see if that can hold, keep the regional banking sector out of troubles. And that's pretty much a wrap for today's show, guys. Thanks very much for tuning in and hitting that like button. There's some P500 getting within a whisker of 5,000. Probably you'll hit it tomorrow. And like I said, the parabolic momentum just continues in this market. Just look to be grinding higher and higher. Thanks to the melt up in NVIDIA, Super Microcomputer, and now Arm Holdings with their earnings report after hours rocketing up here. Who knows how high we can melt up before we get that inevitable blow off top. We'll be looking for signs of it to see how far this can just truly go. All right, guys, thanks again, and I'll see you again tomorrow night. Cheers.